Okay, so basically the idea is to plug your amp into the mic input on your laptop and use Audacity to watch the waves scroll by. So you can visually see when they start clipping. Okay? But the problem is that the output voltage on, say, a 500 watt amp is about 32 volts. And if you try to feed 32 volts into the sound card on your little laptop, it'll explode. That's not good. So we use resistors of the proper values to scale that voltage down to an acceptable value so you can read it with your laptop. Alright, so of course the first thing you're going to need is the program called Audacity, which you can download for free at SourceForge.net up there. It's a fairly simple sound editing slash recording program, but uh, it's a lot of fun. It's been fairly useful to me so far. So, uh, The second thing you're going to need is just a regular 16th inch stereo cable, lopped in half so you can stick a multimeter on it. I happen to have crimped on some slide connectors so I could plug and unplug it easily, but you know, it's not really necessary. The third is a multi-pack of varying resistor values, so you can experiment and find the one you need. I bought this one at Radio Shack for about six bucks. So, Fourth is a good old multimeter. Just make sure that it can read AC voltage. You know, music, is it's a wave. It goes up and down, alternating between positive and negative volts. It doesn't stay the same as DC voltage, so, so make sure it can read that. And uh, fourth, if it makes it easier for you, to, you can clip everything together. Just buy a little pack of alligator clips from Radio Shack or whatnot else. And uh, that's about it. Pretty simple. All right, so the first thing is just to plug uh, that 16-inch cable into both the headphone output and the mic input on your laptop, and then have the multimeter stuck in there so you can read the voltage as it goes across. So the first thing you need to do after you open Audacity is to generate a tone, which is like a pure audio signal. We'll do it with an amplitude of 1.0, which is the maximum, it's like the loudest the song can get, basically. And I did mine with a frequency of 30 hertz, because that's the lowest that I want my system to respond. But okay, we'll export it as a WAV file. Open up our playback program, whatever you use. We'll play it. And to start, we'll keep the volume all the way down. Because feeding your sound card too low a signal won't hurt it, but feeding it one too high can. So we'll go back to Audacity. Make sure that your mic input is all the way up. And make sure that it's actually reading what you plugged in and not like the mic built into your uh, built into your screen or anything like that, because it will work. All right, we'll start recording. Let's blow it up. Zoom in a bit. And then slowly start increasing the volume. As you see, if you go notch by notch, it gets, see, it gets getting closer to the edge of that little screen. 1.0. See how it's clipping at the bottom there? So we'll back off a little bit. And we know that this is the maximum signal that the sound card can take. So if we look at our multimeter and see what it says, and mine currently says uh, 0 0.075. So now I know that the sound card can only take 0 0.075 volts. So next, you're going to do basically the same thing you just did, except using the amp and its gain knob instead of the headphone jack and volume slider on your laptop. And this time, you'll have a few resistors wired in series between the amp's speaker positive and that 8th inch cable's positive. Now, you're going to have to play around for a little bit to get the resistor values right, but it's not that hard. And I'll show you how. Next, you need to take that tone and save it to your iPod or whatever, and go to your car and play it through the stereo. And set the volume to wherever you usually like to listen to it. If you don't have an iPod or like if it's just a stock uh, head unit, that's fine. Then just put on a radio station or CD and then crank it to where you usually like to listen to it. And it'll work just the same. Now go back to your trunk or wherever the amp is and your laptop. You're going to want to start with a very high resistor value just to be safe. But if you have everything connected correctly and you have your amp's gain turned up like all the way, but this is all you get on the screen, that means that your resistor value is too large and it's not letting enough voltage go through. Conversely, if you start turning up your amp's gain and you see that that wave is getting too large, but it's not clipping yet, like it's getting closer to that 1.0, that means that your resistor value is too small and you need to step it up a bit because it's letting too much voltage through. Eventually, you'll find that happy medium where the wave is comfortably in the middle of the screen. And you'll notice, as you slowly nudge the gain knob, that that wave will start to deform. You see those flat spots there? That's clipping. So when you see that, you can back off just a little bit until it stops. And there you go. You're done. So there you go. 
It took me a few hours to fiddle around with it and find the right values, but I did, and I'm quite happy with it. If it makes a difference, or if it helps you, my amp puts out 200 watts, and I ended up needing three 1 mega ohm resistors wired together in series to get the right readings. And actually, before that, I took it apart and uh, using different resistors, connected it to my head unit, and saw when that started clipping. Because if your head unit feeds your amp a clip signal, your amp is just going to amplify the clip signal, and then it's still going to sound bad. So if you find where on the volume knob your head unit starts clipping, and never turn it up past there, and then set the gain on your amp correctly, then you will never have distortion in your system, which is very nice, because it'll always sound good. I may also add that once you've found the point where your amp starts clipping and adjust it properly, you can actually use that multimeter to calculate the wattage it's putting out and see how much it actually does. Uh, my amp was, is rated for 500 watts at 2 ohms per channel, and then uh, whenever I actually found the where it clips, and then I measured the resistance of the subs, which is 2.7 ohms, and then did the formula which is voltage equals the square root of wattage times resistance. And once I did that, I found that it was actually only putting out 198 watts per channel, not, not 500. So there's quite a big difference now. So I plan on upgrading in the future. But anyway, so you can use that to your advantage. The purpose of the video was just to share what I discovered because I did some Googling and no one else seemed to be able to do the same thing. So hopefully it helped. And that's all the best to you in the audio world and all the rest of it. So have fun. Thanks.